Feeling lost about how to get students to master complex social study skills? Hello, historians, and welcome back. I'm Cecilia Tamez, and I help overwhelmed history teachers transform into confident facilitators of learning. Compare, contrast, cause, effect, summarizing, or the dreaded analyzing are all vibe killers for our students. And let's be honest, for us too, because just thinking about the fact that we have to get students to do these things is enough to get us to break out in a stress rash. So in today's video, I'm gonna share a few quick pointers to help you have a starting point for this process. As always, my virtual doors are always open at Teach Like an Influencer Academy, where I coach history teachers how to become facilitators in their planning, lesson delivery, and classroom management so they can optimize their teaching systems, be the influential educators they always dreamed of, and protect their energy and well-being. Now, in order to teach social study skills, you first need to ask yourself, do your students know what those skill words mean? Now, oftentimes we assume that our students come to us with the understanding of these skills from other grade levels and other content areas, and therefore know exactly what to do. <laughs> they don't. So the very first thing you want to do is teach your students what these words mean just as if they were vocabulary words. Show them visuals, model the process, and post sample questions that pertain to that particular skill verb. So you got to think about it this way. In order for your students to know what to do, they have to know what that word or process or skill entails. Now what I recommend is having a word wall or maybe the skills kind of tacked up on your front board area, somewhere that you can always go back to and reference and then maybe challenge your students to discern which skill you're asking them to execute. Now, don't forget consistency is key. So practice often, refer to frequently, and reference religiously until your students understand the expected outcome of that particular skill. Now, if you're looking for ready-made materials and resources that you can use to help teach your students the definition and the execution for different social study skills, be sure to sign up for my History Teacher Help Hotline in the link below so you are the first to know when that resource drops. The next thing you need to do to teach your students social study skills is outline the process. So now that your students understand what those skills entail, they need to have a roadmap. This is the teaching part of teaching social studies skills. So students need to literally see and hear, so make sure that you verbalize your thinking out loud, where you start with executing this skill. So of course, this means that if you're going to teach the process, you have to know the process. And if this is your first time or you've not had that much success teaching social studies skills in the past, literally take the time to write down your steps. So present yourself a question or a situation where you have to use those skills that your students need to learn and take the time to write down how you are processing and kind of the sequence of steps that you're taking to resolve or execute this skill. You want to post this sequence, this process in your classroom, both for you and your student. Now, does this mean that every single skill practice is some robotic mechanized activity? Absolutely not. This is about training yourself to ask the right questions so that you can prompt your students thinking. Eventually, you'll be so confident in your process and scaffolding questions that you'll be able to embed skill practice in games, in written assignments, cooperative learning activities, projects, because again, you'll know what questions to ask to get your students to demonstrate mastery, which leads us to the next step. Now, if you're interested in having me create a video on how to explain and coach students through different social study skills, comment skills in the comments below. So after that, in order to teach your students social study skills, you need a scaffold and model. Now, you don't want to be the teacher forever. Ideally, you want to move to the facilitator role. When we stay in that teacher role too long without giving a stu our students an opportunity, the freedom to try and fail first, it communicates little confidence in our students and ourselves. And two, we bore our students who already get it. So slowly but surely, you want to remove yourself from teacher to the role of facilitator. And you can do this in a variety of ways. One, by providing or allowing your students scaffold material, two, by allowing students leadership opportunities where they get to lead the class and their peers, three, by assigning a project, game, or an activity that's done either independently 
individually or collaboratively with either you or other peers facilitating. And four, by designing lessons aligned to your students' strengths that will help them build up their confidence. Now, what do you do if your students are still too dependent at this stage? You need to go back and determine if your students have a content gap or whether they need to internalize the process and the meaning of this skill or they don't feel safe enough in your class to try and fail, which means you might need to consider revisiting your methods for building student rapport and overall your management strategies, your classroom culture, because don't forget Forget. Management is not about whether or not you get your students to behave. Management is the managing and the leveraging of all classroom systems. And then designing those systems to align to your desired class culture. Now, when teaching social study skills, you also want to allow your students the opportunities to be the creators. So what does this mean? Now, it's no secret that when the student becomes a teacher, they learn. In other words, you want students to think and ask questions in terms of these skills. Your students model they coach or reteach other students and they simplify the language in a way that sometimes it's more accessible than anything we could have ever thought of. Now to teach students social study skills, you need to design with the skills in mind. So what does this mean? It means that when creating lessons, you need to incorporate repetitive opportunities for skill practice that is intentional and aligned to the content. I feel like oftentimes we want to compare contrast, we want to analyze, we want to do cause effect, and essentially have our students practice these skills as some monotonous routine part of the class completely in isolation. But when you design with the skills in mind, if you're using a visual, for example, you can brainstorm what questions you can ask to get your students to practice that certain skill. When determining collaborative exercises, how can you package your analysis activity in a creative way so students don't even realize that they're analyzing? See, this isn't about being devious or sneaky. It's about creating context, packaging, presenting our activities in a student-centered way. You also want to ensure that your students are practicing with the right skill. Don't spend several days comparing and contrasting a lesson that students are only expected to recall. And also, don't skip the comparing and contrasting if that's what students are actually expected to do. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to watch my video on creating better social studies lessons, which is linked below for you to watch. And if you'd like additional ideas on teaching social studies skills, don't forget to sign up for my History Help Hotline newsletter in the link down below. I want your success. I'm rooting for you. Until next time, class dismissed.